Hi there. So this video is gonna be covering just the basics of how to use Unity. So we have a couple of tutorials on YouTube and one thing I noticed is that if you have zero experience with Unity, then it's a little difficult for you to follow our tutorials because you have no knowledge of how to start operating the whole thing, right? So then this video is here and it's, it's meant to help you get started. So if you have no idea where to start, the first thing you want to do is check the link in our description. And what you will find is this will bring you to an article which we will be updating constantly. So I will not cover this in the video, but this is a guide on how to install Unity on your device. So this will be constantly updated because, you know, Unity is always changing, right? So as it updates, we will update the instructions over here as it is relevant to the times as well. So this covers how to install Unity Hub and how to find a suitable version of Unity to install on your device. So once you install Unity and you've licensed it, then you come to this video. And in this video, we're just gonna show you how to start a new project and then all the different components that you find in Unity itself and how to use them. So once you get this basic understanding, then you will be able to move on to watch our tutorials. <laughs> You'll be able to make a bit more sense of everything that you see. So where I'm gonna start is with Unity Hub right here. So once you install Unity, whenever you wanna start a project, you will have to install, or rather you will have to open Unity Hub. It should appear as an icon on your desktop after installation. If it doesn't, then what you wanna do is just go to start and you wanna find Unity Hub. Just type Unity and you should be able to find it. Okay, so once you're in Unity Hub, how it works is that you should have installed at least one version of Unity in your Unity Hub. So just go to projects and if you want to start a new project, just click on new project. Otherwise, if you already have created a new project, all your projects should be listed in the list right here. So I'm going to create a new project just to run you through you know, the whole process. So when you click on start a new project or a new project, you will find a couple of templates that you can use. So for our tutorials, you will either be using 2D or 3D, depending on whether you are following the farming RPG tutorial the metroidvania or the vampire survivor series tutorials all right so i'm gonna start with 3d first because this allows us to cover more of the basics of unity so i'm gonna click on 3d here and there are two things we have to pay attention to when you start a new project the first is the project name you can call it anything you want i'm just gonna call it my first project so the first thing you want to pay attention to is the project name you can call it anything you want when you create a project you also have to pay attention to the version of unity that you select so if you have multiple versions, then you will have to select the version that you want to create this project in. So for the versioning, it's, it's very important that once you create the project on a certain version, then anyone who was working on your project with you will have to use the same version as well or a higher version. But perhaps for the versioning part of things, we will cover this in a separate video because it's just a whole different topic, right? Second thing and more important thing is to look at the location because this is where your project will be saved. So if you want to transfer your project across to different computers or you want to just show the project to your friends or you want to, you have to submit the project for an assignment, you have to know where the project is located. So what I like to do is for a first time, I usually like to just install the project on my desktop or on the documents folder. Okay, I'll leave it up to you. I've created a folder in my documents folder just to put in the projects, okay? So I'm just gonna place it in my own folder. It's called, it's just in the documents and Unity Collab. And from here, if you select this folder and you create, so I've selected the Unity Collab folder, right? When I create a project, what's gonna happen is you will find, well, we're just gonna wait for a while here. One eternity later. So once you have the Unity editor here set up, you see there are a couple of windows around, right? So usually you will see the hierarchy to the left you will see the scene view in the center, you will see the inspector on the right, and you will see a project window at the bottom. And there are tabs here that you can click on to tab between different screens for some of these sections. You can drag and drop things around and you can move windows to different places depending on how you prefer them. So in our tutorials, we'll be working with windows in the default layout. So if for some, if somehow you have messed up the window structure, don't worry, just go to window and then go to layout and then you can just click on default and this resets everything 
back to the default configuration. You can also click on the drop down over here and click on default. This is the same thing. So how Unity works essentially is that you have a couple of windows and all these windows work in tandem to help you to manage your scene. There are other windows that exist, but whatever you see here, these are the primary windows. So to start using Unity, you just have to, let's go to game object and then let's go to 3D object and then you can create something in the scene. And what you will see here is that once you create something in the scene, the hierarchy updates, the inspector updates as well, and the project window doesn't update, alright? So what the hierarchy does is the hierarchy is a list of all the items that you have in your game currently. The inspector changes according to what you select in the scene. So for example, if you see when I select the cube, it's highlighted in the hierarchy, and the inspector will show you everything that you can modify about the cube. Same thing if I select the light by either clicking on the light here or on the light here, this will cause the inspector to show everything in this particular object. Okay, these are called game objects. Uh, we'll elaborate on what game objects are later and then how the attributes in the inspector fill up. But you can see because there are different kinds of objects, you find different properties that you can modify in these objects, right? So by default, every scene in a 3D game will have a camera and a light. And then we just added a cube to the scene. So when you move in a 3D scene, 3D scenes are a little harder to manage. Okay, let's let's talk about how to move around and look around in the scene, all right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your mouse has three buttons. Okay, the left mouse button, the middle mouse button, and the right mouse button. Okay, so we're going to start with the left mouse button first, all right? To click on anything, this allows you to select them. And the other button that you want to have on your keyboard is the alternate button. So if you left click, this selects objects. If you hold alternate and then you left click this rotates the scene around a certain object. Alright, if you click on the middle mouse button, this allows you to pan. If you scroll the middle mouse button, this allows you to zoom in and zoom out. If you right click, this allows you to look around the scene. And if you alternate right click, this again allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so you can pause the video and you can play around with the buttons a little bit. The other thing I want to show you is that you can right click and then you can press WASD to kind of move around the scene and then you can press Q and E as well to move up and down. So this allows you to control your view in the scene. This doesn't actually affect the game but you know, being able to navigate around a 3D scene is very important, right? Especially when you're building a world, when you're placing items in the game mode and all that stuff, all right? So it's very important that you are familiar with how to navigate around the scene. Okay, later we'll talk about the 2D way of navigating around the scene. It's it's a lot easier, but if you learn everything in 3D, then when it goes over to 2D, it, it becomes a lot easier for you to adapt to it. This is why I'm covering the 3D part of things first. So the next thing you want to be aware of is basically now that we know how to move around and look around the scene, how do we manipulate objects? And you will, if you use a later version of Unity 2021 and above, you will find a bar at the side here. If it's 2020 and below, you will find probably some buttons at the side of the scene here. All right, these are the tools that you use to manipulate the objects in the scene. So if I click on the hand tool, for example, this, the hand tool is useless. Okay, that's ignore it okay the hand tool just does what the middle mouse button does all right if you click on the move tool and then you click on something this allows you to move objects around okay for the move tool whenever i move something i like to just move along the arrows i don't like to if you click on the middle and you just move things around this is free movement this is not the best because you want to be precise especially in a 3d game right if you move things like that it's very difficult for you to figure out where the thing is placed especially when you have nothing in your scene all right it's just floating there so you want to have precise movement and you want to just move things around like that notice that as i move the object the position over here is changing as well so i can either move an object using the arrows here when i'm using the move tool or i can just change the position and this changes the objectives okay so if i'm using a different let's say I'm, i have the hand tool okay i can still use the change of the position to move objects around Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, for every value that you have, you can either manually set a value over here like that, or you can click on the variable name and you can just drag. Okay, here I'm clicking on the X and I'm dragging, the Y and I'm dragging, the Z and I'm dragging. Okay, so this is the first tool, the move tool. 
Second tool is the rotation tool. Okay, as I'm talking about this, you want to pause the video and you want to try these things out yourself. Okay, this is how you get familiar with everything that's going on as I'm talking about them. So second thing is the rotation. Same thing, rotation, you can either free rotate or you can rotate along an axis like that. Okay, and again, I, I prefer to rotate along ex an axis because this allows me to have finer control over the rotations that I want. And again, as you rotate objects, you will find the values change here. Third tool is the scale tool. And this allows you to enlarge or shrink objects. And for the scale, this is the only tool that I pull from the center instead of pulling on a direction. Because if you pull from the center, this allows you to scale the object uniformly as opposed to, say, scaling the object only in one direction. Again, you will see the values change as you modify the scale. Okay, the fourth and the fifth tool. The fourth tool is used in UI, so we don't have to care about it. This is called the rec tool. The fifth tool is the pre-transform tool, which personally I don't use because it's just scaling, moving, and rotating all in one. So I usually, if I want to use these tools, I will just click on these tools manually and use them. Actually, I don't click on them because you can use Q, W, E, R, T, Y. That's the six buttons in the top left corner of your keyboard. As you click on them, th these are hotkeys that allow you to change the tool. So once you get familiar with W, E, and R, then you can just very quickly move things around, rotate things, or scale things up. Or down. So these are just the basics of manipulating objects in Unity. Okay, I'm going to share a few two hotkeys as well. First one is Control Z, which is undo. You're going to use that a lot. Second one is Control Y, which is redo. So undo and redo are going to be something that you use pretty often. And another set of hotkeys that I like to use is the Control D hotkey, which duplicates an object. All right, so these are just three hotkeys you want to memorize because it's very useful. When you use them together with the Q, W, E, R, T, Y hotkeys, you can move things, so you can do things very quickly. All right, so the first one is Control Z, which is undo. Second one is Control Y, which is redo. Third one is Control D. Okay, you can find the hotkeys all inside the edit window over here all right a bunch of hotkeys okay the other hotkey i want to share with you it's not really a hotkey but you, let's say you move your camera away from the scene and you can't find your object okay just double click on the object this will bring you back to the object okay so th these are just some tricks that you want to use as you are moving around in unity and using the application all right so these just about cover all the basics that we have so before, before we move on, I just want to talk also about some special settings that we have. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, when you manipulate objects, there are a couple of options that you can play around with to change how the... This is called the gizmo. So this is called the movement gizmo, right? So notice that my object is rotated. So there are actually two ways that I might choose to move the object. One is I want to move the object but it's aligned with the global axis. Okay, the other way I might want to move the object is I want to align the movement to where the object is currently facing. Okay, so if I were to click on this drop down over here, in earlier versions, this will be a button that you can click toggle between local and global. So right now, if I change this to local, you will see the gizmo points towards where the object is rotated towards. And then if you change this to global, this will align with the global coordinates of the scene. And the other thing I want to show you is the center and pivot thing. Okay, over here you can't see a difference, but once you, if you import 3D models into your project, usually you want to set this to pivot because pivot is the true location of the object. Generally, when, when you have a position for every object, right? So pivot shows you the true location, whereas center shows you where the center of mass for the object is, which doesn't always correspond to your position. So I like to just set this to pivot. This one, it depends on what you need. Usually I set this to local, unless I need to move along the global axis. The other thing that might be useful is you can turn on, turn off the grid. Okay, it's a small thing, and that about covers the basics for how to move and man manipulate things in Unity. Okay, the other thing I want to show you very quickly is that you can parent objects to one another. So let me just create a sphere. All right, so I can parent this sphere to a cube. And when I move the cube, this allows me to show and hide the objects that are parented inside the hierarchy. So the significance of parenting objects to each other is that they start to move together. Okay, so as you work with Unity, you will find that a lot of objects in Unity are parented to each other for various reasons. All right, so for example, you might have a character that carries a weapon. The weapon will be parented to the character because the weapon follows the character around, right? Okay, this is just a simple example. It works this way, but it's a very simplified example. So usually you will find very complex hierarchies when it comes to your game objects. So I might have a 
say hierarchies like that in a real game okay it depends on how you want to set up your game really okay you usually won't just have just one parent to child relationship you will have a whole bunch of parent to child relations and what you want to take note of is when you parent something to another thing when you move that object it moves together okay so that about covers the basics for Unity. So you want to just pause this video again and just play around with whatever that we have just gone through. So before we wrap up this video, I'm also going to show you how the 2D version of Unity works. So if you want to create 2D games, you just got to toggle 2D really. Okay, but if you were to create this project as a 2D game, you will find that there is no light and then there is no skybox as well. Okay, because in 2D games, lighting doesn't really matter, right? So with 2D games, uh, what's the difference? So when you toggle the game from 2D to 3D, this doesn't change the game from 2D to 3D. It just changes the perspective of your game. All right. So in a 2D view, you just gotta, you can only pan around. You cannot really, you know, move around in 3D space, right? And you can scroll your mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out. And that's about it. The main difference between a 2D and 3D game besides the missing skybox, which you can disable by going to window rendering lighting and then just deleting the skybox here and the light here as well okay so once you delete these two things then this converts the 3d game into a 2d game or you can just create a project this 2d game and you will get the setup to begin with and the last thing that you want to do is go to main camera and set this to auto graphic and then this will complete your transformation of your game from a 3d to a 2d game so in a 2d game everything is more or less the same except that Instead of working with game objects, you'll be working with sprites. And sprites are um, graphics that are imported into your game. And let me just quickly find a sprite on my computer and import it so I can show you how this works. So when you deal with sprites, right, you import the asset and then after you import the asset, you have to set the texture type to sprite. And then from here, you usually also have to slice the sprite and everything, but this, this again is a whole topic itself okay the main thing is you want to just set this to a sprite and then you apply this and then this should allow you to use the sprite like this okay so the the rules are the same as the 3d game you can use move rotate or scale to move things around rotate things or scale things up for the details you have to look at our specific tutorials to see how these sprites are used or how to set up animations for them and whatnot so before I wrap this video, the last thing I want to cover is how the Unity system works in terms of, you know, why every object has a different set of properties. Okay, so Unity actually has a very simple and very, if I say so myself, very elegant system. Let me just add a light back to the scene. Okay, let's go back to 3D view. And Unity, everything that you see in the scene, they're all game objects, all right? And when you select any game object in the scene, you will find a list of different properties. So in Every game object, there'll be a set of components, all right? So for example, our cube here has four components, right? A transform, a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and a box collider, all right? So every component does a different job. Every component adds a certain set of properties onto the game object. So every game object actually works the same way in the sense that they just have a list of components. And then the components that you have on the game object determines the behavior of the game object. Right, so even though when you create different things like sprites or you create 3D objects, these things have different components, right? You can actually modify the components on every game object that you have to add different behaviors to that game object. So what I've done here is I've just added a collider onto the character. So this allows the character to interact with the physics system inside Unity. And Unity comes with its own set of components. Everything in the hierarchy is a game object, all right? Everything that you see in the scene is a game object. So you can either add a component by clicking on this button or by going to component here and then adding the corresponding component that you find. And different versions of Unity will have different components that you can use. And you can also write your own components if you so choose. And these custom components will be called scripts. So if let's say I write a component that allows me to control the player character, for example, I might call it player controller. And then once you create the script, you can use the script as a component. So Unity has this very simple and elegant system where everything that you see in the scene is just game objects and then you can either add Unity components or you can create your own and then you can add the components into your, your, your game objects to make them behave in the specific ways that you want them to behave in your game. So one problem that people usually run into when they deal with scripts is that when they open their script, notepad will appear or something or the other will appear, right? So 
Notepad is not a really good way for, for us to edit scripts. So if you run into this problem, okay, then you have to first look at Unity Hub and look at your installation. All right. So because I'm using Unity version 2021.3.8, I want to click on this and go to add modules and make sure that Visual Studio, whatever version it is, is installed on my computer. All right. So if I have multiple versions of Unity, probably I will have Visual Studio installed. Okay, so if it's not installed for that particular installation, before you install that, you want to check as, check also that Visual Studio is installed. Okay, make sure that it's Visual Studio and not Visual Studio Code because Visual Studio Code is for web development and it's meant for us to edit individual scripts. Visual Studio is meant for us to edit entire projects, which is what a Unity project is. So once you make sure that your Visual Studio is installed, Okay, you don't want to install multiple versions of Visual Studio because in 2022, for example, the Visual Studio version is different. And because I already have 2019, I do not want to install 2022. Okay, so not every install of Unity has to have its own version. You just have to have some version of Visual Studio. So once you have that, you want to head over to Edit and then go to Preferences. And then make sure that the external script editor here is set to Visual Studio. Okay, if you can't find this option here, you go to Browse. And you have to find the install folder for Visual Studio. It's usually under. I'm not sure where it's under. <laughs> Give me a moment. It's usually. Let me just do a quick Google. Select Visual Studio here, then you have to go to Browse. Again, let's do this again, right? C Drive, Program Files, Visual Studio, which is under here, and 2019 or whatever version. So if you're using 2022, of course, you select the 2022 folder. Community. Common 7, IDE, and then you want to find the exe file called dev environment. If you're using Mac, I'm sorry, you gotta find, <laughs> you gotta figure this out yourself where it's installed, right? So if you don't have the option, then you just click on open here, and then you should have Visual Studio appear here now, All right? And then once you have that and you open your scripts, Visual Studio will open. Alright, so we have another video which you can find the link of in the description below as well that helps you to enable autocomplete inside Unity. So what is autocomplete? Autocomplete is just when I type my code, right? It helps to... So for example, in Unity, there are these things called colliders, right? So if I were to say, get a box collider, there is this autocomplete that appears, alright? So you also want to get that set up and for that, we have another video which just look into our just look at our description all right or you can look at the top right corner of this video and there'll be a link over there that you can click on to find out how to set this up that is if you don't have autocomplete inside your visual studio editor okay i just want to bring your attention as well to two other things before we wrap up this video one thing is so in your scene right so unity is con it's made up of 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 of, uh, of different scenes and every scene you can think of it as a level as a map so what we have here is when you create a project there's always a scene in the scenes folder and it's called sample scene all right so if you want to have a different scene you just gotta go to file new scene and then this creates a new scene and of course you can choose whether you want to have a 3d scene or an empty scene that usually is used for 2d games let's create a, a new 3d scene and then once i create a scene for this scene to get saved in our project, I will have to save the scene. And then this will prompt me to select the place where I can save the scene. So in Unity, when you have a game, usually you have a series of scenes and these scenes will represent different levels. That is the first thing. Second thing is that when you create your game objects in Unity, there is a way for you to create these things called prefabs and these are blueprints, all right? So how do you do that? By dragging the object in the hierarchy and dropping them into your project folder. This creates a prefab that you can later reuse. And you can also modify the prefab by double clicking on it. And if you modify the prefab here, this changes all copies of the prefab. All right, so really, really interesting stuff. There's a lot more that we can do with prefabs, but we have to leave that for a future video as well. Yeah, so that's it. So I hope this video helped and once you get familiar, you probably have to pause the video a lot, right? But once you try everything out here and you get a sense of what is what, then you can move on to look at our other tutorials and get started with creating your own game. Enjoy.